Hello, family. Hey, guys. I wanted to um, come into your space today uh, to share the following with you. So, the single most important gift in the world, in my mind, is the gift of communication. The greatest tool of influence all leaders have is communication. You cannot influence where you cannot communicate. It's impossible. So learning to communicate is a critical skill for any of you who think of yourselves as leaders, right? Of course, learn to communicate. But if you were to learn to communicate, the question becomes communicate for what purpose? What's the outcome? 99% of the time, the reason we human beings communicate is to either get somebody to do something we want them to do, or to get somebody to see something we want them to see. So either I want you to take action, or I want to change your perspective. But either way, to do both of these things, I need to communicate, I need to influence, I need to, as the language says, persuade. So I hear terms like selling and I'm like, selling is a portion of how you persuade, but the art of persuasion is much bigger than just the art of sales. Sales at the end of the day is how you transact. It's how I get you to not only see value, but take action on the value that you see. Persuasion though, well persuasion is, uh, it's a broader science. I spend a lot of time in our business, internally with my own team, helping in particular my management and executive team learn how to communicate. The reason this is important is because we've been growing fairly rapidly of late and I've been stepping up the level at which I serve in the organization. And as I step up, I've had to create leaders to take over some of the things I used to do. And the only way to do this is not only if you capacitate the leaders to do the job, but it's also if you capacitate the leaders to inspire, to enthuse, to persuade. Which means I've had to learn, how do you take a manager who's good at reading a spreadsheet and teach them how to communicate and inspire people, how to persuade. As we speak, I'm busy capital raising. We're busy capital raising. Which is such a funny experience, really. But you know, the art of capital raising is just the art of persuasion. It's getting investors, whether they're institutional LPs, family offices, or high net worth, to see the world the way you see the world and back your thesis. It's persuasion. It's communication. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it is this. If there is a single gift that God has given me, a gift where I genuinely and honestly believe I am unequaled. It's my ability to persuade. Hmm. But if you were to do it, how would you do it? What's the formula for learning how to communicate? It's actually scientific. There is a process you can follow. And if you follow the process, you'll get the outcome. The first part of that process is to understand motivations. Everybody does something because everybody wants something. We're human beings, we're creatures of incentive. You don't go to the gym and sweat and bust your ass just because you're bored. You go there because somebody served you ads of somebody who looked really good physically and you bought the picture that if I look like this, I'm gonna feel happier. The car you drive is because somebody served you an ad saying if you drive this car, you might be happier. Even the school that you send your kids to, you send them to that school because you either believe it's going to give them the best education or it prepares them for the future, or, but everything you believe about the school, you were persuaded, you were told. So there is an implicit motivation for the things you're doing. There are some things we do as human beings where the motivation is clearly explicit. Then there are some things where the motivation 
is implicit. But make no mistake, there is motivation there. So the first part of learning how to influence and persuade is to be interested in your audience. And not just this, be interested in what's motivating your audience to want to talk to you. So I'm fascinated by you watching this video right now. Why are you watching it? What do you hope to learn? It's a trade-off. You're giving me your time and attention and I'm serving contents on top of mind in your head right now. But there is a motivation there. The motivation for me is I want to remain top of mind for you. What's the motivation for you? Why are you here? So the first part then of learning how to arc story and how to persuade is to understand the internal implicit motivation of the audience, the person with whom you're dealing, having a conversation. The second thing to understand when you really want to learn how to persuade and influence is intent. So motivation is why people do what they do. Intent is what impact do they want to have? Their true intent, their motive, their, um, the outcome they desire. Here is a, a great way to think of it. My motivation uh, for being a my motivation for being a venture capitalist is that I am excited about the future and I love partnering with founders um, and I genuinely believe that I can make a difference in working with founders building the future. My intent would be building a better Africa. So once you understand the motivation, the why people do what they do, the intent is then around what is the impact that they want to have? Now you've got to arc these into the conversation with the person. And I'm going to give you an example of how you do that in a minute. The third is what is the end state, the desired outcome, the end state. In the most iconic speech of the 20th century, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. In fact, he says, I have a dream that one day the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to break bread in the table of brotherhood? I have a dream today. What did he say he had? A dream. What was he selling? An end state, a desired outcome. Motivation, why do you do what you do? Intent, what's the impact that you want to have? Desired outcome, where are we going? And why do we want to go there? So how do you arc these then into something that really inspires people? Well, to arc them, you have to base them all on one thing, which is that the cause, as Simon Sinek says, has to be a just cause. People have to believe that the cause is worth pursuing. You can't just, I have a dream, but the cause is not worth pursuing. It's got to be real, rooted and grounded in, in people's perspective of the world. And if it's not, then you've got to communicate it in a manner that it becomes that. It's got to seem like a just cause. I want to build an electric car company. Why? Because we're destroying the planet. I want to build a payment gateway company. Why? Because it's hard for entrepreneurs to facilitate payments across Africa. I want to build an ed tech business. Why? Because education is prohibitively expensive for the poor and I want to make it affordable. It's got to be a just cause. So how do you arc these into a story? How do you arc these into a conversation of persuasion with your client? with your staff, your employees, with your partner and your spouse. <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a live example of something that I did the other day. So I've been recruiting, been looking for um, somebody who's going to help us with capital raising, which is not an easy thing to do. 
And typically people who do this are very, very good, very well technically trained, very connected, and have tons amount of opportunity. They can work in many places. But not just this, they're also very expensive. And, you know, we're kind of at that hockey stick of our growth curve, right? So we're, we're, we're here, where we're like building up to the future. But, you know, we are managing costs, comrades. We are managing costs. <laughs> so, so I was talking to a, a particular candidate and this candidate, you know, they like, you know, they've just finished a stint working at one of the leading investment banks in the world. They want to take three months sabbatical and really think about their future and where they want to go. They've got an MBA from uh, Waterloo. And uh, like smart, smart kid. There's an MBA, I think it's an M undergrad from Waterloo, an MBA from, uh, uh, I want to say MIT or something like this. Really, really smart young lady. So we get to the part of the conversation where it's my, my turn. So she's told me a bit about her. It's my turn to convince her now that she should come and do this with us. And recognize I'm asking her to surrender a decade of her life because that's how long it's going to take. At least five years. And that's if we're in a good innings. So I said the following to her. I said to her, Tell me a bit about the place you grew up in, in Abuja. She's Nigerian. And she starts telling me about this place she grew up in, in Abuja, and um, the friends she had and where her friends are now. And I said, when was the last time you went home? She says, no, I go home fairly often. I go visit and I see friends and mom and dad and family and granddad, etc., etc." And I said to her, I said, do you think that Abuja today is the best version of itself? Do you think given the skills, competencies and talents of the people that emanate from Abuja, it's the best it can be right now? She said, no, of course not. Come on. I was like, and why not? She said, well, frankly, because the top talent doesn't always enjoy the seats of power to influence things the way it needs to influence them. Like, hmm. So Turin, what would I say, what would you say if I said to you that if you came on board and you helped us do this, one of the things we've got attached to this fund is we're building a leadership foundation and 20% of the carried interest of this leadership of the, of the fund 20% of the carried interest is going to be transferred into the Leadership Foundation and we're going to use the capital in the Foundation to identify, educate and accelerate young leaders across Africa. Young boys and young girls, we're going to send them into engineering school, we're going to send them into political school, finance school, medicine school, with a single idea that once they complete their education, they must come back into the continent and build it. And then I said to her, and we're not the only ones to do this. There's several other foundations doing this as we speak. The difference is we're not going to wait until we're worth a billion dollars in valuation. We're going to start doing it the minute we start making our carried interest. So the reason I need you to come on board, name is Claire. The reason I need you to come on board, Claire, because I believe you can help us raise capital with the right investors to take us to that point. And once we've reached that, I believe that you can become a critical part of our investment team to ensure that we identify the right companies that give us the right exit multiples so that we can best better the chances of capitalizing that leadership foundation and building the future we want to build. Claire, you can work anywhere. You can go and work at Wall Street and they will pay you 10 times what I can afford to pay you. Hell, they'll probably pay you 10, 10 times more than I'm earning. <laughs> but when you're 50 years old and you look back at your life and you think about this inflection point, you will ask yourself the question, how have I lived? What impact did I leave behind? 
Did I use my skills to leave my people, my country, my world a better place? Only you will know the answer to that question. But I think that if you came on board with us, the answer would be yes. And that was it. We ended the call. I still haven't heard back from Claire. Hopefully by the time she watches this, she would have come back and said yes. But realize the whole conversation about why she should join what we're doing wasn't about us. I didn't say this is the business plan, these are the outcomes. I was like, what's her motivation? What's the intent? What's the desired outcome? And how do I base it on a just cause? So go back, go back into your own business, into your own life. Look at some of the things you're doing and ask and answer for yourself the question. Motivation, intent, desired outcome, just cause. That's how you persuade. That's how you communicate. That is how you lead. <laughs> I'm on fire, right? I know, I know. I can literally hear, this boy is on fire! <laughs> All right, family. I hope you've enjoyed that. Have a kick-ass time. Leave a comment below and tell me some of the things you'd like to hear from us in future. Cheers.